I'm the son of a black man from Kenya and a white woman from Kansas. I have brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, uncles, and cousins of every race and every hue scattered across three continents. And for as long as I live, I will never forget that in no other country on earth is my story even possible. It used to be like nobody knew that he was mixed, but he's talking about that a lot more. He's not necessarily saying, no, I'm not black, I'm not white, I'm mixed. He's not necessarily saying that, but it's not much of a, a mystery to anybody anymore that he's, you know, mixed. And he's talked about that, especially in that speech that he made. If that can happen with one person, that could happen on like a larger scale with an entire community. If, if that community is ready to be seen as that, I mean, I don't know, but I've just, I, I just wanted to make that observation. I identify as uh, mixed, biracial, uh, black and white, any of, the, any of those. My name's Angelica Abdul. Um, I'm black, Native American, and Chinese. My name is Matthew Baden. I'm biracial too. I'm half African American and half Caucasian. Um, and I express characteristics of both in me, so therefore I am a multiracial person. My name's Alex Lee, and uh, I would uh, identify myself as half Korean and half white. I always say that I'm biracial. I never say that I'm black because that's not who I am and that's not how I was raised. I'm made up of three different heritages and I'm proud of all of them. So I proudly say I'm Irish and African American, Native American. I used to say half Arab, half Indian, but then someone pointed out to me that not half, I'm like very much whole because saying half makes it sound like you're not good enough to be a whole. I had a little kid tell me my hair looks like a poodle. And I was like, yeah, I did. I had a little kid telling me my hair looks like a poodle, and I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like it. I guess it, I guess it's not like a really like a clear cut line of when I'm saying I'm black, you know. But um, if someone were like, oh, are you like, I get asked like if I'm like Latino, and so if they're asking if I'm Latino, I'm like, no, I'm black. Throughout my life, like my childhood, my mom always made sure that I saw my dad's side of the family, and my dad always made sure that I saw my mom's side of the family. So I had a good balance of what was going on in my life. I was yeah. <laughs> uh, I think uh, in, when I was in high school, my freshman year, I told my friend like, or not my friend, it's just someone. I told him I was like, oh yeah, I'm black. Like I identify as black. And he was like, oh my god, no, you're not. And I was like, what? Like how can you tell me like what I am? But I think it's interesting because like as I grew older, um, now. People just see me as people generally, if you know me, they'll see me as a woman. Um, in your home? In my home. Yes, uh, I would say not. It's more like conflict between two families. Like, my dad's side of my family um, wasn't always very accepting of my mother um, being, you know, black. Uh, so. I guess there's conflict in that because just my dad's side of the family is very traditional. Like the women do the cooking, uh, the housework, they don't work, you know, they take care of the kids, but my mom is like the complete opposite. So my mom was like always judged for that. Um, so there's conflict more between the two families, I would say. People always ask me the question, am I mixed? And I'm like, no, I'm black. However, I do know my background is mixed. So therefore, sometimes like I am so into you know the black culture because that's what's practiced in my home. However, sometimes I really want to expand out of my comfort zone of just the African American culture and kind of get more into the Irish culture, get more into the Indian culture. So sometimes I do want to explore outside of my own culture. Okay, so in my house, actually, it's everything is kind of like black culture, so we really don't eat anything out of soul food. Maybe some Italian food, maybe some Chinese food, but it's just really soul food. You've spoken of the way in which your mother taught you to understand your identity. Yeah, it, it was in my junior high school years when I'd gone to this new environment, and I finally got up the courage to ask her the question, okay, you're white, I'm black, 
help me make sense of all this. Who am I? Who does that make me? Because trying to be in the middle, trying to be both, just isn't working for me. There's nobody around me like me, and this just isn't working. It's just further ostracizing me from either group. So what does one do here? And it was really simple what she told me. She said, well, let's go, let's go look in the mirror. And she said, okay, look at me, what do you see? I said, white skin, blonde hair, blue eyes, I, that's you. And she said, what do you see when you look at you? I said, brown eyes, brown skin, brown hair. So she said, we're obviously very different. And she said, you will find it easier, I believe, to identify with the group that looks most like you. And I didn't really take that in at first because I thought that would be denying her my primary caregiver, the hero of my life, the woman who sacrificed and loved me more than anybody. But I realized after a while she had a point. So I made the decision early on to accept that I was really a black woman who had a white mother and that it was all okay. That choice that I made for myself was really all.